Hola a todos, as they say around here on the Colombian island of Providencia in the middle of the Caribbean. We are here to make music with the also Colombian band Monsieur Perine, my friends, with whom I was lucky enough to make a couple records. The idea was to record Monsieur Perine live, raw, acoustic. Since they spent so much time in studios, we decided to do something completely different. Catalina wanted to see Providencia, it was a dream of hers. Why not? Let's go here. The vibe is great, it's pretty, the weather is amazing. A smidgen humid, but amazing. So here we are. We looked for a good place and it looked really awesome, except for one tiny detail. We didn't notice that the ceilings were about six and a half feet tall, which would be a really bad look to record something open sounding. And then we went up to the bedrooms to see, you know, if they would be big enough to actually record stuff in there. And um, they're not, and there's beds in them, and there's no place to put the beds. And then there's a little attic place, which is kind of cool, kind of like a library. That's also too small. And um, talking with the, the band, we decided we wanted to record everybody together uh, and everybody had to see each other. So I decided, and I may regret this, we'll see, to record outside on the decks because the decks are amazing, they're big enough. And as far as inspiration goes, it's pretty much as good as it gets. Of course, there are small issues, like for example, the ocean, the birds, the mopeds and if they're loud enough, the lizards. So let's put on some sunscreen and let me show you what I have in mind for the live room control room setup before everybody arrives. This, my friends, is the upper deck, also known as the control room originally. I was gonna put my desk, well, table here with my stuff on it and then the musicians down there in the lower deck, AKA the living room. Unfortunately, that didn't work out and will not work out because of the length of guitar cables. I want to use the DIs on the Apollo for the guitar and I don't have a cable that's long enough. So force of nature, cable nature, means that I have to go down there and there's a prep area near the pizza oven, which is perfect for a control room. Um, power, power is great. So we love power. We brought a tester, thankfully, and we found out that basically none of the outlets in this house are grounded. And some of them are 220, some of them are 110. The first power strip plugged in went up in smokes this morning. So we finally found an outlet upstairs uh, where an AC is plugged in, which means it probably has enough juice. It's grounded and it's 110. Life is good. So we're gonna set up now and uh, make some music as soon as possible. Setup is done. The first thing to do is to introduce you to my friend Daniel Sanent, who is one of my partners and first engineer at Flux Studios in New York City and happens to be Colombian. He's a great person to have on a Colombian island. Also, he speaks Spanish and I don't. Um, so, let me run you through the setup very simply. First, a computer laptop I picked up on a fruit stand. There's an apple on it. Uh, and then one Thunderbolt 3 cable into the Apollo X8P and then a Thunderbolt 3 to 2 adapter into the Apollo Twin. That gives us 10 channels of unison preamps or 7 channels of unison preamps and 3 DIs, which is what I'm doing right now because we are set up for scenario 1, which is completely imaginary since we haven't rehearsed the song and we don't know what instruments are going to get played. Uh, so this will change. But every microphone is plugged in directly into the back of the Apollo X8P or the Twin. And we are using the UA console for the Q system. And what we're doing is this. I set it up to have four Qs. There's a little preference for that. Um, I set Q1 aside is for us, so we can listen to uh, the whole mix on the twin and on the X8P. And then I have then Q2, three and four left open. And I assign Q2 to line out one, two, Q3 to line out three, four, and Q4 uh, to line out five, six. Just one thing about the, um, the Q. Basically what we're doing is we're taking a line out of the Apollo, as I explained, and then we're feeding it into this bar, which is an active volume knob. It runs on batteries, and that's it. So you have your line out, plug it in into this, if you're a professional, there you go. And then your musician can just decide the level, and you decide to cue the mix in the Apollo console, but they decide their level, so they don't have to complain to you that it's not loud enough. They just complain that it's not enough for this or enough for that, which is already less variables to manage in this ideal environment. What we have in the live room is Catalina in the vocal back there with the Latin audio, LS208. So we have Santi here. 
he's going to be playing ukulele and the ukulele is going to be mic'd by the Biodynamic M160 and then we have a DI that is going to be running into the Apollo X 8P. So for the second guitar, we're going to have Elkin, he's going to be right here. So we have a Bayer M160, Biodynamic M160 for the acoustic guitar and the DI is going to be picked up into the Apollo Twin. And over here, we're going to have Adinda playing a small tiny bass, all DI into the Apollo X 8P. We have line checked everything, we have mix checked everything, we have wind checked everything, and everything is wonderful. So it's time to go rehearse with the band at the beach, they're waiting for us at the beach, and come up with the structure, instrumentation, and whatever else we can come up with to make sure the song is as good as possible, and then come back here and record, hopefully in time for sunset. So let's, um, can you try the whole song again? Yes, sir. That's a great tempo. Yeah. It feels really good. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. it feels nice, it's like creamy. Oh yeah. Could we do a broken, like a smaller verse here? Okay. Like with just you and um, no, no, uh, well, let's try a thing. Let's yeah. try three different options. Option one, let's try doing the verse, just the two of you. See how that feels. So let's come out of to -do -do -do, to -do -do -do, to -do -do, and then go into a verse where there's just the two of you. No percussion, no bass. <laughs> at least at the beginning. Shit. And now this. Okay. And then we bring that halfway. Let's try that. Cool. So let's go from the whistle. One, okay. two, one, goes, and. What if, if this is really good? Yeah. While I make the no, bit whistle, great. they sing. Oh, yes, please sing with us. Se puso a cantar con nosotros, I'm sure. Okay, good. I know what I'm going to do. Uh, are you happy with this? I like it. I like it too. We are ready to record and shoot. Let me give you a quick party recap before I go. After the rehearsal, I uh, started listening to the sounds and with a more refined arrangement I was able to hear different things and also I wanted to put unison preamps on the raw tracks to be able to have more of a record sound right away as opposed to wait until the mix. Um, there's no commitment fear here so let's just do it. What I remember is I did uh, all 1073s on the drums because that transient control is great and also I don't know for some sort of a fetish I like to use the same preamp on the same instrument it's just me. Um, and so on the drums, we have the 308 on the bass drum, which is uh, unbelievably directional and is really doing the job. And we have this Show 313 figure eight ribbon that allows us to get both the snare and the hi-hat at the same time. And then we have that DI thing that goes puck puck on the snare and that's going through the high-Z input of the Apollo. And I'm also using a 1073 on that just because I can, because I have the DSP. Um, the other things we did is actually put a Helios preamp on the bass to get more density. And then after that, I removed a little bit of the muffle and I added some uh, kind of saturation with an SPL uh, tube thing. And it really did that mm, thing that I was looking for. I can hear her better. And, uh, and she was a lot happier. You could see her smile when she was playing. The minute I put that on, she was like, ah, I know this. So that was kind of cool. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, on the Quattro, which Really, we should call it an ocho because there's eight strings on it. Um, it's a tenor ukulele. Um, I put the V76 because I really want it to sound super warm. If you listen to it uh, in the room, 
uh, with the ocean. Uh, it's really kind of clangy. It's a beautiful thing and, and the sound of it brings you right there, which is why we decided to use this instead of this 335. We said, this is gonna sound so perfect island vibe. Um, it, you play that riff and you're like, oh, I'm there. But the sound lacked a little bit of depth and a little bit of um, thickness. And so the V76 preamp did it right away. It was like, oh, that's the sound. So I did that. Uh, on Elkin's guitar, I tried the V76 also and it didn't work. I didn't like the sound of it. So I switched to the other tube, the 610B, and that sounded bananas right away. We could tell right away with Daniel and I were listening on the, on the headphones. We were like, um, this is not working. And then we put the 610B, it was like, oh, that feels good with the tenor ukulele. So those are basically just transit control and warmth and it makes everything sound more like a record without having to EQ or do anything else. And then on the vocal, I used the V76 on the vocal and that sounded great right away. That's the sound we have in our head. And also added a pull tech. Since this mic is designed to be ultra directional, um, it, it's not necessarily the whole sound of it. Uh, in this particular situation, is not tailored to have the warm vocal I was looking for for Catalina, but I got the rejection I wanted. So um, I just added a pull tech, a smidgen at 100, a smidgen at 200, and boom, there we have it. Uh, the other thing I found out is that I am not going to need those uh, yellow things on their, um, on their microphones because the wind happens to not be a problem for those two microphones. For these, for the 160s, it's useful. For those two, it's unnecessary and then it kind of looks ugly. Since we're going to shoot a video for the next take, the actual take, then I'm going to remove them so we don't have to look at them and it'll look prettier. And um, you know, it's got to look pretty. For the background vocals, the M88s, I use 1073s. I like the ability to have the really uh, special high pass filter. And also I had to pay uh, close attention, especially for Elkin to make sure that the high pass and the sound of the vocal did not ruin the guitar, which it doesn't, so that's great. And for the whistle, I use also a 1073 because the high pass goes all the way to 300 and I don't need anything below 300 for uh, that whistle. Actually, it helps getting rid of the wind and the transient control of the transform emulation makes it sound uh, closer to what I'm going to want in the end. So I chose that. Um, and that's about it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the sun to start setting because it looks so gorgeous. It's surreal. It looks like Photoshop in real time. So uh, they're taking a rest and they're going to come back and then I'm going to press record and then we're going to shoot a video and it's going to be beautiful. Yes, I see que recuerdo Mi paisaje ideal Y aunque me vaya lejos, no me pienso olvidar. There you have it. Thank you to Universal Audio for putting this together, and thanks to Monsieur Perine for suggesting Providencia, Colombia as the recording and shooting location. An Apollo X8P, a twin, a laptop, and a really, really good band. Came out great. We had a lot of fun. Please take a second to watch and listen to the result. Adios. Canto tropical